Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. I owe our sister in Christ, Kathy Kiso, a great apology. And I hope you're still with me, Kathy. Three weeks ago, I someone commented apparently on this thread from three weeks ago. She had requested an urgent uh, she has an urgent request to have warrior intercessors to pray for her son. I'm so glad that many saw this and replied and said they would be praying and agreed with my prayer that I put on here. But I'm going to go ahead and read this so that those who didn't see this, if I made a video on this, I don't remember and to go back three weeks worth, that would be, a, I'd end up getting sidetracked and probably forgetting again. So I'm going to go ahead and make another video. And because certainly more that see it, there be, would be more that are praying, right? All right, so here's her prayer request. She needs to have warrior intercessors pray for her son. As of late, I have been concerned for my son's life. Oh, dear God, forgive me. I'm so forgetful, and I don't know why. Probably by the time I replied, and then there were other things I had to reply to, I got, I forgot. So, anyway. As of late, I have been concerned for my son's life. 22 years ago. When he was 15, so that would make him 37, but 22 years ago when he was 15, he was viciously attacked by two young men in an unprovoked assault. It is too long a story, so I will keep it short. As a result of this attack, my son, Andy, had severe brain injury from many blows to his head. Then at the end of the attack, one of them ran up and jumped on my son's head as he lay there already unconscious. See, the violence of today is not new. It blew out. It's just worse. It blew out his eardrum. And he had bleeding on the brain. Suffering a bad concussion. The after effects of two ear surgeries and years of the emotional part that causes him to act irrationally. I imagine he's got brain damage from all that. It is both physical and spiritual demonic. He has recently worsened. I have carried this burden for so long. Please pray. I can fast for breakthrough. Yes, pray over the things we buy good word oh I think this was a video on anointing used items that you bring into your home like furniture used furniture and stuff um, okay so there's the prayer request and uh Oh my goodness. I just feel really bad that I got so I get overwhelmed and even a little thing someone could have called or knocked at my door or it doesn't take much. And then I forget. I had said, I will ask for prayer for all to pray. I ask right now, Jesus, Kathy's son needs you right now. 
We need a breakthrough for her to be bold enough to just cast the demons out that may have entered from this attack or however. I hope you didn't allow that and that his problems are strictly medical. You can heal him right this instant and I am praying for that, Jesus. Please, in your most holy name, I pray. Amen and amen. And like she said, having an army in agreement matters. She was praying that he will get an MRI. And that they had talked about it, but he gets sidetracked. And then his fiance, now listen to this. This was in a comment below my prayer. She says, his fiance just went through chemo for ovarian and uterine cancer. So he put things off. I don't believe she is saved yet. Oh boy, the world is my anchor. The word, I'm sorry, the word is my anchor. Must stand no matter the storms. I'm just so sorry that I missed this. But better late than never. Let us pray for this, this man. Andy, I believe, was the name. Let me move up here. Andy. Dear God, I ask you for prayer again for Andy and for his mom. But Lord, if he hasn't already, please... Get him to agree to the MRI. It may help them determine the right course of treatment. Of course, we pray that you would come and take those who are ready to go in the rapture. And I pray most of all that Andy and his mom are ready to go. And that they will help his fiance to be ready as well to at least be saved she will need you after she is left behind unless she's saved and makes a genuine conversion then perhaps you'll let her go too that's what I pray in Jesus name so many not ready so many saved that aren't ready people it's mostly the lukewarm christians not a new believer you know how you were when you were first saved you wanted to tell everybody well maybe not all of you but a lot a lot of brand new believers do they're so excited they want to tell people and that's how it's supposed to be and you want to get into your word and you want to find a church. But watch my last video. You don't want to go to an institutional church, a regular church building. Because there's no Holy Spirit there and they're not preaching you the truth. You may hear a lot of good stuff. But you won't hear. They won't be preparing you for the rapture. They might sing some good praise and worship music. But you might hear some lies. That then you'll believe, you know, things like you don't need to repent anymore because Jesus paid everything on the cross when he shed his blood and if you're not, if you are not grounded in the word, get there. If you're a brand new believer 
or you help save somebody, you get them grounded in the Word as soon as possible. Get them a Bible. If you have to go without a couple meals, I mean, I'm dead serious. You take that money, you can go, you can get a Bible. They're not real great, but they're black and white print. Bible, King James Version, at the Dollar General for a dollar. Unless they've gone up to two dollars. But, but I know they used to have them. The Dollar Tree had them too. For a dollar. So you can find, and another good place to go is these, um, thrift stores. You can find Bibles at a thrift store. There's people either give away their relative that died, their stuff, they don't want it. Or they decided maybe they bought three or four or five different kinds and they picked a couple favorites and donated the rest. Anyway, any Bible is better than no Bible. And stay in the New Testament to begin with. Jesus died to fulfill all the Old Testament laws. And I know, I know he has showed me that. He paid that debt. He paid the debt for our sins. He, when he said to tell us die, the debt is paid in full. That's what it meant. The debt, the sin debt. It's like when you sin, you now owe him something. If I can say it that way, you create a debt. Okay, when he said the debt is paid in full, this, I think this is where once saved, always saves comes from. That once you accept Jesus into your heart, all your sins are forgiven. If you forget, if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But that's also true for the future. Yes, your sins are covered, past, present, and future. But for the future sins, you have to ask. He taught the apostles. What we call the Lord's Prayer. This is just one example. In that prayer, he's teaching them to say, And forgive us our sins, and we will forgive those as we forgive those who sin against us. Or your version might say trespass. That means you've done something wrong to them. You've trespassed against them. As we, we trespass against Father every day, or Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We grieve the Holy Spirit when we sin. How do you sin if you're a born-again believer? I tell you, I don't know how I did it so easily, but boy, I did, and I still do. Thoughts are now a sin. Thinking the wrong thing. Complaining. When he has provided so well. And I know some of you don't, you don't have so much provision. But for whatever reason, he's chosen that to be your tribulation. We're in our tribulation. The bride of Christ is in our tribulation. The elite, the, the ones who are watching we're paying for what we believe. We have chosen Jesus over the world. We have said no to worldly things and yes to him. And that has caused people to just... Uh, she's no fun anymore. Or he's no fun anymore. For all he wants to talk about is Jesus. Or he still believes there's going to be a rapture. I, 
I find out they call me church lady around here. Now, if any of you remember, <laughs> the real, the, not the real church lady, but there was a comedy act by a guy dressing up to be a religious type church lady. They called her the church lady, and it was a comedy and my friend and I pulled that up on my computer and I was watching that and I said, I don't remember liking anything like that because he was talking about sexual stuff and how people were dressing in the church and oh, they were ready for fornicating and this is definitely not made for children, all right? But the point is, I said, oh, those must have been made after I enjoyed that program. I don't remember ever liking something like that. And she said, yeah, that's how they were. I might have liked it for a year and then they got dirty. I don't, rem I don't remember any of that. But then that's been like 40 years ago. It's been a long time. And I remember thinking that was hilarious. Whatever it was, you know, the stuff she said, he said, Dana Carvey. I thought it was Jim Carrey, but it was Dana Carvey. Anyway, that's why we looked it up. I'm rambling now. I just wanted to ask for prayer for Kathy and her son, Andy. Help her to stay strong in this. Our battle is almost over. And I pray for Andy and his health problems and his mental issues. And I pray, let us pray for his fiance, and, and that she will be saved more than cured from cancer. Because if she gets saved and gets that, oh, I'm born again, I'm, I'm going to heaven, and she understands, and she fully commits, and that is so much better than just being healed, only to die again, and end up in a lake of fire, right? So, let's be sure to keep her in prayer. Just say, Andy's fiance, God knows. He knows exactly who she is, and what she needs. And he'll know how to reach her. Okay? Alright. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. And the internet connection. And over each and every one of you. And all of your devices. And my computer. And with that I'll say bye for now. And I will talk to you later.